After five years and nearly 300 games as a professional basketball player, what is it that I wish that I knew before turn in professionally? Well, today I'm going to get into that and hopefully this will help you guys out if you're looking at turning professional, if you're not sure if you want to turn professional, and if you're curious about what the professional life is like. I know if I knew these things beforehand, I would have saved years off of my career. So let's get into it right away and dive into it. Colorado, la pelota la ronda! Now, the first thing that I wish I knew before turning professionally was that the money sucks to begin. It is absolutely terrible. There's no getting around it, guys. Now, if you're a high Division I player or a mid Division I player, this may not have been the case for you. But for 99% of the players out there, the money will suck to begin with. Now, this doesn't just apply to one specific region, but it applies globally throughout the world. In Europe, if you start out in one of these starter leagues in one of the lower divisions, we're typically looking at zero to maybe $500, $600 around there, maybe. In Latin America, it's no different. In Asia, it's really difficult to get started if you're just beginning as a professional player. So you have to be ready to grind it out as a professional player to begin. Now, what does that mean? It means a few things. Do not stop earning income in another way. You need a side income when you start playing professional basketball. Now, that can be online. That can be a seasonal job when you get back home. That can be a contract position. That can be whatever it is, but you have to make it work because it simply will not be enough for you to live off of if you're starting out as a professional player it just won't be enough if you're making 600 500 700 dollars per month it's going to be tough going at the start it may be a few years before you can actually live off of professional basketball when i started out i actually started with the majority of my money coming through online services and then a very little amount of it coming playing professionally and now it's actually flip-flopped now hand in hand with the first thing that i wish i knew is the second thing and that is the season lengths of overseas basketball these will vary wildly depending on where you are i did a video about this so i'll link it in the description below but just know this if you're in europe this may not be as applicable to you because those seasons will go for about seven eight nine months in general but if you're anywhere else in the world and you're beginning as a professional player some seasons only go for two to three months some seasons go for four months some seasons go for five months it really depends so if you're training year round and you only get to play two months out of the year that can be something that's really taxing on you not just physically uh, but mentally as well you're saying i'm putting all of this effort in and i get to play for two months out of the year is this even worth it in the end and then of course you have to consider that you have to work at the same time when you're back home so that's going to disrupt your work schedule there will they let you come back in after you're done your professional season how will it work out so that's another thing that a lot of guys aren't prepared for is that they don't understand that the season length isn't the same as it is in North American basketball. If you were anything like me, you probably assumed that it was the same as college, that you would start in maybe October and then go all the way till maybe April or May. But that's not the case because it really varies depending on where you are. So be prepared for this. Make sure you know how long the season is and make sure, and you have to make that judgment right at the start. You have to say, is this worth it to me? What is my job? What am I earning at home? Is this something I really want to pursue, even if it's going to set me back financially for a few years? Make sure you know the schedules. Check out that post. Now, the third thing that I wish that I knew before turning professionally is the competitiveness of it. Now, you may be thinking you're a basketball player. Every level is competitive. Yeah, but the professional level is different. Obviously, if you've played basketball, you've probably had a bad day. You've probably had a bad week. You maybe even had a bad month and a slump. But in overseas basketball, there really is no doghouse. There really is no bad week or bad month. They'll just cut you and that's it. So that's something that people really have to be aware of is that this is a buyer's market. These teams have so many options. They have so many players messaging them every single week on social media, on their platforms, on personal messages, on emails, on everywhere. So they always know that there's going to be a surplus of players out there and that players will come cheap. That is the biggest thing. Players will always come cheap because there's more players out there who need a break than there are teams that need a player. So you have to be on your game. And I'm just not talking about on game days, but in practice, you have to bring it in your workouts. You have to bring it. You have to be a leader if you're overseas. And that's something that a lot of guys 
aren't used to they aren't used to that they're just used to blending in with the team and it's really not like that if you're an overseas a foreign born player if you're a import in these leagues you really have to lead you really have to be on your game no matter what so just be mentally prepared for that now this next one goes hand in hand with the competitiveness of overseas basketball and I've covered it in multiple videos before I've been trying to scream this from the mountaintops because this will help so many people is that you have to understand the roster regulations. That is the main reason why overseas basketball is so competitive is because it's not in a typical roster format. Now, as I mentioned, I've covered this before, so I won't get into it too much, but just know this. If there's a 12-man roster, then the majority of the roster will be comprised, will be made up of players who were born in that country. They are known as nationals. You will have a few roster spots on every team. It will obviously depend on the region and the country that you're in, but you'll have a few roster spots available for players who are foreign-born. These are known as imports. And if you're an import and there's 12 roster spots and there's only two spots for imports, guess what? It's very, very competitive, and those are where you're competing against high-level guys. So you have to understand the roster regulations and how they work in overseas basketball. You have to understand how you can make yourself a national, and you have to understand your citizenship, your passport rights, and how this increases your value tenfold. I'm linking that in the description below because I don't want to get into it too much here. If you haven't watched that video, stop watching this video. Go watch it right now. And the last thing I wish I knew before playing professionally overseas was that not all leagues are created equal. If you're North American, you're going to think in the same sense as I do. And that is in the, in the college system in North America. So I'm talking NCAA D1, D2, D3, JUCO, NAI, in Canada's U Sports and the CCAA. In all of these systems, we see players transferring all the time throughout those systems because... You know, there's players who may be at the D3 level and then they go all the way to D1 and they have a great career at D1. It may not be that often that that happens, but it does happen. And same thing with D2, D3, NAI, JUCO guys all the time jump all, all the levels. So what I'm trying to get at is that in overseas basketball, there are some regions that basically if you try to go from that region to the other region, they basically won't even consider it like you play professionally. I know this is something that players from Latin America experience all the time. They try to go from Latin America and they try to go to Europe and they're basically not even considering that professional basketball because there's huge differences in play styles when you get to overseas basketball. In Latin America, it's a lot more individualistic. It's a lot more one-on-one. -on -one. In Europe, it's probably the complete opposite. They are running a lot of systems. They're doing a lot of dribble penetration, going through the sets. It's a much higher IQ type of game. So it's completely different systems. Teams sometimes won't even look at the two as if they're similar. So that's why you see a lot of players in Latin America. They might just stay in Latin America. Uh, obviously, there's some exceptions, of course. If you're playing in the higher level leagues in Latin America, Argentina, Brazil, then obviously it's going to be easier for you to make that jump to another continent. Uh, same thing if you're playing in Asia and some of the higher level leagues there. It's going to be easier for you to make that jump to another place. But in some of these places, it is going to be very, very hard for you to get to another region or another league uh, just based on their prerequisite, basically their requirements of how they think you should play and if they've seen enough of it in you. So don't expect that just because you killed it in one league uh, that it's going to transfer over and you're going to make a leap all of a sudden to another continent or another region. That's not how it works at all for the vast majority of these places. Again, there are exceptions. Now, keep in mind, these are just a few of the things that I wish I knew before I started playing professionally. This list could probably be over 100 items if I, if I really thought about it. But these are some of the main points that I think you guys should be aware of. Now, a lot of these topics are actually covered in other videos. Uh, so if you guys found this beneficial, go ahead and search the, out those other videos because I think that you will also benefit from those as well. And please, if you find this helpful, like, comment, subscribe. It's going to help the channel grow. And more importantly, it's going to help get this information to players who can actually benefit from it. Anyways, thanks so much for your time, guys. Peace, love, God bless, and take care. Till the next one.